What's going on everyone? This is JVB from TalkingAboutGames.com As you can see right there Check out the website Obviously, the title speaks for itself We talk about a lot of video games We, we review them We have several podcasts dedicated to them We also do comic book reviews And you're going to want to read What Mike had said about episode 700 of Amazing Spider-Man. He wasn't too happy about that. But I'm not here to talk about talking about games.com. I'm here to talk about my top three gadgets of the year for 2012. Now, these aren't necessarily gadgets that came out in 2012. Actually, one of them came out, came out in 2011. But these are the gadgets that I depended on or uh, helped me combat boredom in the train stage in the train station on, on my way to work, sometimes during work, or lounging around the house. So the first one I'm going to start off with is the Samsung Galaxy Notes. This is the first one. The Note 2 obviously is a beast on its own, but the Note, the original Note, was the first one to literally change the game. It it created the, uh, or people began to call it the phablet, phone slash tablet, and so now you see a few other manufacturers coming out with phones that are approaching the size of the Galaxy Note platform. Uh, if you're not aware of the Samsung Galaxy Note, the first one, which is this one right here, has a screen size of 5.3 inches. The new one has a screen size of 5.5 inches, but is thinner, well not thinner, it's, uh, has a narrow look and they made it a little taller. But regardless uh, though, and I'm trying to do a pinch here, which I can't, whoops. Though this is outdated by today's standards, meaning that with, elect with electronics, things move so rapidly that a brand new phone that you got maybe six months ago might seem obsolete or a little outdated. That's just the way things move in today's world of technology. But the Note does everything I want it to do. It plays games. I can take notes. I can do Photoshop. I can watch entertainment. I can play uh, music, of course. I can do just about anything I can do on my computer. And that is why I bought it. And this S Pen right here was a pretty big reason why I went ahead and got rid of my iPhone 4. Uh, the job that I do, I have to take a lot of notes. And I use my phone for a lot of things. So it's definitely something that uh, the Galaxy Note, that is, and the Note 2. Uh, they're devices that have changed the game, and though people still look at me and ask me what the hell am I holding in my hand, is it a tablet uh, or an ebook reader, once I show them that it is an actual phone, I get a few chuckles here and there, but then I start to showcase the high points of this phone, besides the screen, and they're pretty impressed. I definitely am. The second device that has been amongst my favorite is the good old PlayStation Vita. Now today I had a nice conversation with some of my friends on Facebook. And they were saying, uh, and, and granted, these people own the PlayStation Vita. 
So they're not just talking out of their ass and whoop, there goes my phone, it's running out of batteries. I'm not talking out of their butts, so I, I respect what they say. They they also have video game podcasts and websites. And they were talking about how the PlayStation Vita is a flop. Now, I had to def- I had to jump on board and defend the PlayStation Vita. Simply because uh, I don't understand what a flop is when it comes to uh, to the PlayStation Vita. I don't know what their expectations were. I don't know if uh, they were talking about sales. So I asked the question, what is a flop? What what puts the Vita in the category of flop? And most of them said, not enough games. That I couldn't believe. Because there's a large library of games. There's games for everyone. There are puzzle games. There are action games like this, like Uncharted Golden Abyss, which looks absolutely phenomenal and controls very well. Some of the touch controls are a little overboard with the rear touch. But as you can see, uh, this looks not quite up to par with Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3, but it's pretty close to Uncharted Drake's Fortune, the first Uncharted. And of course, the cutscenes are full of uh, comedic value. As you can see, you have to do certain things in this game with the touchscreen. Let him get out of here. Uh, by the way, a lot of people tend to forget that you can do multiple things on the PlayStation Vita as uh, multi multi functions. So you can do things in the background. You have a full PlayStation Store with PlayStation Plus capabilities now. So Sony with its PlayStation Plus, which has been an extremely uh, positive thing for Sony and is a great value for $50 because I got Golden Abyss, Uncharted Golden Abyss for free I've gotten quite a few games for free for the PlayStation Vita and the PlayStation 3 so while Xbox Live is I guess the king of uh, online multiplayer functionality or on live capabilities and, f- and features PlayStation Network with PlayStation Plus provides its own unique uh, service for its users and it gives you content as long as of course you remain a subscriber you get this content for free but you have a fully function functional store you have party chat you have video chat you have party chat while you're playing of course you have gmail and stuff like that netflix things i'm not really going to use on the regular with the playstation vita the playstation vita is meant to play video games these are all my games. Retro City Rampage is fun as hell. Very reminiscent of old school 8 bit video games. Motor Storm RC is fun. That was free. Jet Set Radio was free. Gravity Rush was free. As I stated, Uncharted Golden Abyss was free. Mortal Kombat is fun as hell. It's just a lot of games to choose from. So I don't understand the notion that there isn't any games for the PlayStation Vita. Granted, I will agree that there aren't as many games that meet the production value and quality of Uncharted Golden Abyss. That I will agree. Sony needs to get some of these developers to either hurry up I mean, Gravity Rush is really good, and is a unique title, and Little Big Planet for the PlayStation Vita is quality as well, but we need more. I will agree with that, but there are plenty of games there. You even, look, you get messages, you can send pictures, 
you tweet, you do Facebook. I don't like the fact that they're trying to instill applications so they can somewhat be functional like a like a smartphone, but it's it's meant for gameplay and that it does very well. Throw in the dual analog sticks, rear touchpad, front facing camera, rear facing camera, a functional D-pad, face buttons, and not the best sounds, but I use these bad boys whenever I play on the PlayStation Vita anyway. I use headphones. So, number two on my list is the PlayStation Vita. Don't let people hate on it. Judge it for yourself. It's an amazing device. And... Yeah, it, it has been slow with the superior blockbuster titles. I figured that the Black Ops first-person shooter game was going to be the one game that would uh, put in the market and, and, and cause a shortage of PlayStation Vitas where during Christmas time everybody would want one. I figured it would have that Nintendogs effect, but it didn't. And it's not the fault of Sony, it's the fault of the developer. So let's move on to number three. And you're looking at it right now. You guys have seen my Surface RT videos. I really enjoy what Microsoft has done with the Surface RT. It is uh, capable of providing entertainment. I can play video games, rant it. I don't really like to play too many video games on the tablet. That's why I have the Vita and my phone. I can do work. I can do legitimate work on the PlayStation. I mean, uh, excuse me, on the Surface RT. Of course, I got my music. I have my movies, and I have my browsing. I don't need an official Twitter app because I can do that with a full-blown Internet Explorer browsing experience that plays flash and if there's a website that doesn't play flash you can add that in there with some little trickery but and this just came out recently here's one of the really cool reasons why I'm adoring the Surface RT does anyone remember this game let me unpause I'm playing this bad boy on an Xbox 360 controller. Just to show you. Oh, there we go. Trying to kick some ass. Time to chew bubble. What, what is it? Try to kick ass. Try, time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh shit! She turned into a fucking tiger. I haven't played Killer Instinct in quite some time. Oh, crap. I know I could do something. Whoa. Anyway. Killer Instinct. This is an application called... Uh, let me get this application. The name of this application, right? It is called SNES 8X. And you can play... Uh, Nintendo, no, but Super Nintendo ROMs on it. And I have Killer Instinct, Super Punch Out, and Tecmo Bowl, and a few other classics from my time, from the early 90s, uh, 80s to early 90s. And as I stated, I truly suck in this game. It's been a very long time since I played Killer Instinct. But this is the capability of the Surface RT as developers begin to take a chance and put material out like this. They don't provide the ROMs, you gotta get that yourself and you gotta own the actual games. <clears throat> but they're providing the software for us to be able to play these games, these ROMs. And hopefully we'll see some PlayStation. Uh, type 
uh, ROMs, and maybe some Nintendo 64. Uh, excuse me, while I get my ass kicked. Wow, pitiful. Anyway, the one thing with this ROM, though, with this specific software, is I have no idea how to back out from a game. Meaning if, for example, I'm playing Killer Instinct, I want to go to another ROM, I have no idea how to do so. So it's not perfect. As you can see, you don't get full screen capability, which is okay. Um, what I have to do is actually back out and start another ROM from scratch. Load. There goes my selection of ROMs. And let's do a little bit of punch out. Actually, let's do Super Mario World. I'm going to try it out with the Xbox 360 controller. It's a nice picture right here. Anyway, I have this plugged in via USB port. Alright, so let's check this out. So as you can see, though I don't play a lot of games on my tablet, I do have the option to play ROMs like this uh, that if I decided to I can play games from my past that suit me more as a gamer I don't like a lot of the touchscreen type games and as I stated that's why I, that's why I use my PlayStation Vita you know if I want to play <coughs> excuse me a video game on my on, on the fly on the train or wherever on a trip I'll play on my PlayStation Vita and once in a while uh, Angry Birds Star Wars now I will give some let me pause this I will give some honorable mentions um, because I did have a Nexus 7 uh, tablet which was to me a phenomenal device I returned it in favor of a bigger tablet. And I have no regrets. Uh, I do have the Android operating system on my phone, and since my phone is 5.3 inches, I didn't really need a device, a 7 inch tablet. Uh, it just didn't make sense. Also, my wife owns the iPad Mini, though I still feel like uh, from a from a technical standpoint, the Nexus 7 uh, gets the edge. The build quality and the thin, the thinness and the weight difference between the Nexus 7 and the iPad Mini is pretty significant. The iPad Mini is definitely for her. It's light. It's thin. It it is a familiar operating device that is very simple to use for anyone. And since we have an iMac, uh, we do own applications that she can utilize. Plus, it has a very stripped-down version of i iMovie and iTunes. Uh, things that if I wanted to utilize them on the road, I could. I have that option. Uh, she also has the Samsung S3 smartphone, and that is a great phone. Uh, I was a little envious when she first got it, but it, it, and rightfully so, because the S3 is a phenomenal phone. It has definitely, in my opinion, unseated the iPhone as the top dog in smartphones. But phones like the new uh, Lumia 920 and HTC, they're they're making some noise with their phones. So, especially that. Lumia 920. Uh, it's it's a really good phone as well. So we have a lot of competition amongst, uh, not amongst, but within the uh, electronic community, the industry as a whole, and that's a good thing for the consumer. Definitely a good thing for the consumer. So those were my top three devices for the year of 2012 uh, really quick as far as consoles uh, 
I have all three. I don't have the Wii U. But the PlayStation 3 gets the edge over the Xbox 360 because of the better exclusives. Now, that didn't mean that they sold as well as they should have. But their exclusives were really kick-ass. And I still see that trend going forward in 2013. Just want to throw that out there. So until next time, enjoy your New Year's. Have a happy New Year. Hug your family. Tell them you love them. And make sure you visit TalkingAboutGames.com. And uh, give this video a thumbs up. Register. Tell your friends. Tell your family. So until next time, I am JVB. Talk to you.